um, on YouTube for the benefit of largely for students who miss class. Uh, but I also do it as uh, as protection essentially for me because students can partially record something and um, put it up. Everything's up. Okay, everything I say gets put on YouTube. Um, I don't think I need that stuff at the top there because I think now the registration system stops you from being able to take the course. So you've got a variety of texts that we're using in here. Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, which is this one, okay? And then George Orwell's 1984, which is this one. Cover in the bookstore might be different. Same with the Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. Um, you can get them on Amazon for really, really cheap, like a buck each. Uh, so I would probably go there rather than the bookstore. You might not be able to get them as quickly, but, you know. Um, those two are required. I recommend a dictionary. You don't have to. Dictionaries are available online. And then I've got all of these links here. And this isn't because I'm trying to turn you into men or anything like that. From this guy's blog called the Art of Manliness blog. But the reason we're using these is because I didn't want to assign you a book on rhetoric. Um, he's written these, I don't know, seven or eight blog entries that are all about essentially classical rhetoric. And they're a lot less expensive than buying a book because you can go to the library and print it out for free. Um, and I do recommend printing them out when we get to this part of the syllabus and bringing them to class because we will talk about them um, quite a bit. Okay, And you can, you know, put them on your computer, etc. Uh, we'll talk about computers and laptops and things like that in a moment. So there are several, and we will be discussing um, all of these, except for maybe everything from delivery to an introduction or from an introduction to delivery. I don't know how much we'll, time we'll spend discussing the logical fallacies. We might talk about them. 35 great, uh, greatest speeches in history. Notice that's entirely subjective. That's according to Brett McKay, the guy who wrote the blog. These are what he considers the 35 uh, greatest speeches in history. I would say probably, at bare minimum, half a dozen. Pretty much everybody else who studies rhetoric, who studies speeches, would say, yeah, they're among the greatest speeches in history. Lincoln's um, Gettysburg Address, for example, is commonly regarded as the best speech, best American speech ever. One of the reasons for that is it's so brief. <laughs> it's 204 words, 206 words. Only took him like I think 10 minutes, five minutes to deliver. And yet it just packs a punch like you cannot believe. Okay. So you've got all of that kind of stuff. Um, where did my little thing go? Go the other way. Then the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Um, I've given you the link there. That's for MLA reference information, which we will talk about some. Um, but it gives you, you know, how to cite things according to the Modern Language Association. Okay. And then additional online readings and assignments will be posted. Okay. So they're not up there yet, but I will post them at a later date. Okay. Disclaimer. Syllabus is subject to revision. Like, I don't know if you printed out the first copy of the syllabus that I posted, but I substantially revised it within about eight hours. Okay. Um, I'll probably do that again. I may not revise the syllabus entirely, but the material that we will cover um, will probably get changed quite a bit, or let me put it this way, frequently, between now and um, as the semester goes on. Okay. By the way, I'm Dr. Sherman in office. Should have gone over this first. Where is it? The top. Uh, Peck Hall 352, which where are we? Which is in the which is in the hallway 
go out here, take a left. That hallway, I can't remember what color it is. Red. Um, in the office block there, go into the office block, take a left, take a right, take a right. It's in the back corner. Um, office hours are 7.30 to 9 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.30 to 8, Tuesday, Thursday, by appointment. Notice I give you an email address, but no phone number. For the simple reason, I don't answer my phone. I haven't answered my phone in probably 10 years because the only calls I was getting were people trying to sell me something. Mutual funds. You know, uh, what are those packages where you get a room in a house somewhere for a couple times a year and you end up... Time yeah, timeshare <laughs> crap. Total nonsense. Um, if you do call I'm, and I'm not there, I get an email that shows me who called. If you leave a, a voicemail... I get an email transcription of that or a sound file where I can play it. Um, usually I, I know if it's a student who is called because they leave a message. If there's no message, odds are very, very good that it's spam. And man, the last couple of weeks I've been getting, I don't know, about 10 calls a day. Again, and there, there's no messages left. So I just delete them all out of my email. Um, use this email to contact me, not D2L. Because I check this regularly, regularly meaning within the 16 hours, roughly a day that I am online, half cyborg it feels like, um, I check it every half hour. Okay, D2L at most once a day, sometimes every two or three days. So this is the, the way to reach me. And I've got a personal policy. Uh, I try to respond to students as soon as possible. You will never go longer than, I think at most, 24 hours. And I think the only times when it's taken me more than 24 hours is when I've had some kind of family emergency. Like last fall, my mother-in-law had a stroke, and so I was not paying any attention to this kind of stuff for a day or two. Uh, usually within an hour. And we'll talk about why you might need to email me, you know, things like that, other than class kind of stuff in a moment. Okay, so go back down to where we were. So, disclaimer. Changes will be made orally in class, and I will post them on the announcements part of D2L. Uh, for example, I may say, you know, we're not going to read Bradbury, or we're not going to discuss Bradbury on such and such a date. Instead, we're going to discuss, and I'll post an article or something like that, that probably will have something to do with what um, Bradbury is discussing in Fahrenheit 451, okay? Um, check your D2L daily before class. Check the announcements and or your email. Why? If I need to cancel class, I will post it there by 7 o'clock, okay? Um, I might need to cancel class because of weather. I live about, I don't know, eight or nine miles west of campus, Sometimes we'll get snow. There'll be nothing here. Sometimes there'll be snow here. We'll get nothing there. You know, um, things like that. I'm sick. Um, I'll post a message. Okay. Students with disabilities, you know who you are. Um, I probably already should have received an email from that office, which I haven't for anybody in here. Okay. Uh, cell phones, laptops, tablets. Use of cell phones for calls, texting, selfies, etc. is strictly prohibited. You might think I'm kidding about the selfies, but I had a student in one class a couple of years ago. We were in one of the bigger classrooms. It's like she's in the back corner. And I'm not kidding. The first month of class, every day, for the first 15 minutes, she's ch -ch -ch -ch. Like, three, like, like there's three different backgrounds, you know. And she did that literally every day of class for about the first month. And I'd say, Jordan or Jennifer, whatever her name was, stop it. And she finally just kind of disappeared. Um, so don't, okay? If you're a first responder, EMT, fire, police, etc., uh, let me know right now, like today. Send me an email. Um, and I'll say, okay, obviously, have your phone out. Put it on silent. It buzzes and you get up and leave. I'll understand why, okay? Um, similarly, if you have an ongoing family personal emergency, if right now you have somebody who's in the hospital and they're in the hospital for a pretty major thing, they're not in the hospital for an ingrown toenail or you know something like that, but it's it's pretty significant. Let me know if it's 
If that's right now, let me know today. Send me an email after class. If it happens in the course of the semester, someone near and dear to you has a heart attack, someone gets a diagnosis of cancer, you get a diagnosis of cancer. I've had it happen, okay? Let me know within 24 hours. I mean, if you're home and your roommate has a heart attack or whatever, and something terrible, and you've got to get your roommate to the emergency, get your roommate to the emergency room first, take care of the emergency, but within 24 hours, send me a brief email. You don't have to give me the down and dirty of everything, but you need to let me know for the simple reason that if you do that, I will do everything I can to make sure that one, you complete the course, and two, you complete the course successfully. That might mean you no longer come to class because you've got to spend those days with so-and-so at the hospital. You've got to go back to home, and home isn't in Murfreesboro, or it's not in Tennessee, okay? I, I'll work around that with you, all right? Um, if it's that kind of thing, I will have to have some kind of proof over what the, the um, situation is, okay? But if you do that, I'll, I will work with you to enable you to successfully complete. Had that happen a couple times last fall, okay? But, big, huge but. If that happens, let's say first week of February, God forbid, but if that happens and you wait until literally, this happened last fall, the last week of class, and then you say, oh, Dr. Sherman, I should have let you know, but I haven't been around lately, two months, because X, Y, Z, I can't help you at that point. I mean, you've already failed the course at that point because you probably haven't turned in a couple of the assignments, okay? And we'll talk about what is automatic failure for the course in a moment. So, if something happens, again, God forbid that it does, let me know very, very, very soon, within 24 hours, okay? Um, and sometimes, you know, I'm, I might say, you might also want to contact university counselor, blah, 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 because sometimes, you can't work around it. Sometimes you just have to withdraw from the university, okay? I had a student whose dad died last fall. She ended up, he was ill beforehand, but she came into class, set her phone down, because I told her she could. It buzzed, she walked out, I hear this ah! out in the hallway, I go outside, her dad had died. He wasn't that ill, okay? Um, she ended up having to withdraw from the university entirely, okay? Uh, which, you know, totally understandable. Okay, um, if you have a laptop, you are strongly encouraged it, encouraged to bring it to class or a tablet. Okay, um, I usually when I teach comp, which I don't teach very regularly because I'm a really really senior faculty member and most senior faculty members don't teach comp. But when I do, I like to teach it in the computer lab where everybody has a workstation. Uh, I don't know how uh, we ended up in here. But if you have a lot, I, I really, really encourage you to bring it. Why? Because you can work on stuff in class. And you can pull up things, and I might make reference to articles and say, go to, and have you pull up a website, etc. cetera. Um, I'll tell you right now, we're going to be talking about a lot of current events, current issues in higher education in the United States. You know, um, the quote-unquote cancel culture, Me Too-ism, Wokeness, anti-wokeness, right, left, middle, in whatever, okay? Everything's going to be open for discussion, and I'll say some comments about that in a moment. So, bring it if you can. Just so you know, this is the exact opposite of what I've told every one of my other classes. All of my other classes, I'm banning laptops and tablets. Because three of my four courses last fall, 90% of the students who brought them were doing homework for other classes because they'd have a biology textbook, a nursing textbook, an aviation textbook, a chemistry textbook out, and they're taking notes, okay? Um, you guys can. Okay, classroom decorum. Decorum just means proper behavior or behavior if you want, okay? So attendance, you know, participation, decorum, are expected. This means arrive to class on time. Usually, I'll have the door already unlocked, assuming I'm not running late in my previous class. Um, when you get here, 
or at least 10 or 15 minutes before class starts. Okay. If you have another class prior to this, um, I don't know, in the rec center or in my, my 8 o'clock class, so, sorry, my um, 9, 10 class, I've got a guy who's in aviation, uh, aerospace major, and he's coming from the airport. And he gets out there, the Murfreesboro Airport, but he gets out there at 845. So he's got to drive down Memorial onto Clark to Middle Tennessee Boulevard and find a parking spot in 25 minutes. <coughs> I've already told him ain't going to happen. So I'll leave the door open for at least the first 10 minutes. Okay. Um, don't kill anybody trying to find a parking spot. It actually did happen about 10 years ago. An MTSU student killed another student because that other student took her parking spot. She was waiting. Somebody zipped in. Person got out and stabbed her. Literally, I'm not making that up. <laughs> Literally, she killed her. Okay? Um, and it's now in the big house. Uh, no, it was over in Bell Street, man. I mean, it wasn't that great a spot. Really. It's like, she was having a bad day. She was having a bad day. You know? It was. Anyways, um, so try to arrive to class on time. Um, if I'm talking, you're quiet and paying attention. If somebody else is talking, you're quiet and paying attention. Paying attention. Uh, we, we might get into some knockdown, drag out good arguments in here. But wait till the other person finishes, then blast them. Okay? But blast them means do it civilly and appropriately. No calling names and stuff because I'll tell you to stop or, or I'll tell you to leave. Okay? Um, that's the, you know, be courteous to others. Uh, use language appropriate to the setting. No swearing foul language every now and then. You'll hear a damn hell from me, probably more like every class, but usually nothing worse than that, so nothing worse than that, okay? Um, I say do not eat during class. I understand it's kind of, well, depending on some people, it's kind of getting close to lunch. Maybe you worked an all-night shift and it's more like dinner, you know, whatever. Um, if you bring food to class, I don't have a problem with that as long as it is silent food. So that the person next to you, you know, isn't twitching because you're eating a bag of crunchy Doritos or Cheetos or something like that. Or if you're drinking something, you're not slurping it um, like you have no control over your lips, like you've just been to a dentist or something. So just, you know, eat or drink quietly, okay? Um, don't sleep. I will publicly awake and shame you. I can't do it in this, in this classroom because there's not enough space. But in the other classes where you have individual desks, I showed students, I will come up, and I've done this like three times in my 28 years here. I will come up and kick the underside of the desk. Really is effective when somebody has their head down flat. Because they wake up and they'll never fall asleep in that class again. I'll either do that or I'll just say, and everybody leaves and just let that person sleep until the next class comes in. And they usually kind of go, oh my God, I can't believe it. And they don't do it again. Um, if you're that tired, on seriously, don't come to class. Get some sleep, man, because if you're that tired, you need the sleep. I know that as one who has sleep issues, okay? Um, and I won't fall asleep because I'm usually pretty animated. You, most students don't fall asleep in my classes because I'm pretty loud, usually. Even in a small classroom like uh, this, I'll have colleagues or secretaries who are on the side halls to this one, who will tell me, you're so loud, please close the door, okay? Um, so I usually do close the door. What else? Don't wear headphones, earbuds during class. So if you have them in now, pull them out, please, and don't keep them on. I, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk, about, talk about that in a moment. Um, I had a student in a class last, no, I actually take that back. I've had multiple students, a couple in class last fall, who came in, one with the big old Beats headphones, kept them on in class, music playing. And so I'm sitting, standing up here, this is one of the other classrooms that are quite a bit large in this room, and he's in the far back corner, and while I'm talking, I can hear what is playing. Okay? Just don't. I mean, if your music's that important to you, this isn't your class. Okay? So... Um, don't, whatever that was, don't cheat or plagiarize some another's work. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. Usually when I'm talking about that in my courses, you know, refers to quizzes and things like that. 
We might have some quizzes in here. I'm not sure. Um, so it probably doesn't apply as much. What else? Come prepared to class. Uh, come prepared to participate. What does that mean? Well, that means, for example, when we start discussing Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, which is Friday, <laughs> um, bring it. Why? We're going to go through this fairly closely. That is, we will go through maybe not page by page, but I can almost guarantee you we will talk about probably every other page because this book is so dense with important material. And we'll talk about why um, in a moment. Same thing when we get to 1984. And I'll warn you right now. Has anybody ever read this? One, two, or three of you. This is hard, tough slogging. This is a hard book to read. Not only because, you know, if you open up and look at it, look at it, it is physically, the words are really dense on the page. But the subject matter and the material Orwell was writing about in 1948 is just hard. Okay, so I'll warn you, which is why I've got so many days assigned to it. I mean, there are passages in here that it might take us a day or two to talk about a paragraph. Because the ideas, okay? and the ideas in both these books, these are not pleasure reading. These are not entertainment reading novels. These are novels full of ideas because both, author, both authors want to essentially warn us of something. And what they want to warn us has already essentially happened. More so this one than this one. Though... This one has become really important in just the last couple of years when we've seen people trying to start erasing history, removing history, okay? And we'll talk about why it's important in such, okay? Um, so bring the current book and or if we're talking about one of the blog things, bring the blog if you have it printed out, that's fine. If you have your computer and you've got it open there, that's fine. I'm not going to go around. I, I, I had originally a sentence after this that said something like, because it's still on my other syllabi, and I told the other students I'm going to remove it. It said something like, you know, if you don't bring a book and or something to write with each class, you will be, I don't remember what it was, penalized five points each instance. And I thought, you know, the hell with that. I'm not your book nanny. I'm not your notes nanny. I'm not your nanny, period. You guys are paying for this. Or maybe the state is, you know, through scholarships and such. Um, it's your class. Whether you learn from it, that's up to you. Whether you get anything out of it, that's up to you. The more you put in, the more you'll get out and such. I can pretty much almost guarantee you, however, if you don't bring, for example, the first several weeks that we're doing both these novels, if you never bring the novice to class, you're not going to pass. Not because I'm going to go, oh, so-and-so has a bright F. No, it, you're not going to be able to participate in the discussion, and you're not going to be able to write what you're going to be writing about. Okay? So just be forewarned. Um, if you don't follow the guidelines, I'll talk to you. I don't know. Like if you keep bringing in wearing earphones, if you keep calling somebody in the class, you know, something inappropriate, Okay, I'll speak to you. That'll be your warning. It'll be one warning. Next time, I refer you to student judicial uh, slash dis disciplinary affairs, and they take it from there. Okay. Um, if there is a quiz and you're not here when it's begun, you get a zero for that quiz. I don't know that there's going to be any quizzes. That's just language I copy and paste from other ones. Okay, so semester grade. Based upon cumulative total, paper, and quiz grades. You're going to see there are four paper grades in here. Okay? We'll talk about the papers in a moment. The papers will get progressively longer. So your first paper will be relatively short. Okay? Your last paper will be relatively long. Four or five pages. It's not going to be much longer than that. At most. Okay? For the simple reason, i got four classes about 20 students each class, 
some of those are writing more papers than you guys are. Um, anyways, okay. Um, so I just add up the total number of points you've earned by the total number of points possible. It gives me a number somewhere in here. That's the grade. If it's a point six, it gets rounded up. So if you have an 89.6, you've gone from a B plus to an A minus, or to an A. There is no A minus, okay? There will be in the individual paper grades, all right? So that part should be pretty clear. Any questions so far? Okay. So the schedule. For each day, and I'm going to ask somebody to hit the lights in a moment when we finish this. For each day, you need to have read the material prior to that class and be ready to discuss it. So, notice for Friday, I have Bradbury Fahrenheit 451. You don't need to read all of Fahrenheit 451 by Friday. That would be asking a little too much, okay? There's 179 pages from the beginning to the end of what's called the coda and the afterword. We're going to start with the coda and afterward. Definitely have read those. But I would just suggest, okay, I've got, what, six, seven, eight? Looks like eight days, maybe nine. Um, assigned for Fahrenheit 451. I wouldn't necessarily suggest dividing it into ninths and reading only that number of pages. Um, I would say read as much as you can for Friday, okay? I, I don't know how much that is. I don't know how many other classes you guys are taking. Some of you are taking three other classes. Some of you are probably crazy, and you're taking five other classes. Okay, you got 18 hours. I've had students before who have had 21 hours. They're absolutely bonkers, in my opinion. But they want to graduate in three years or something like that. Um, I, I'm trying to think of where would be a... At the, I don't know, try to have the first 50 or 60. This reads fast. Even though I said it's dense and it's got a lot of ideas, it reads fast. This, it's like going to the dentist, man. It, you're going to, there are going to be points where you need to go, Sherman, this is a horrible book. It's horribly written and it's boring as all get up. It is boring. I'll warn you right now. Look, you'd rather read a telephone book than this. Okay. But this is so important. It is so important for the lives we are currently living. And because of the society it describes has actually existed. Not Oceana and that kind of thing. But he's, he's describing a society that really existed in the world in the 20th century. And still exists to some extent in a couple of places. Okay? So... Read the first 50 or 60 pages for Friday and just come prepared to ask questions or discuss. If there are things you don't understand, please, please, please write it down. I don't get what he's talking about. What is that? I don't understand why, you know, etc. Okay? And it might be that you've touched on something that Bradbury doesn't really address until later. Okay. And we'll, I'm going to talk a little bit about the two books in just a moment. We're, I was going to say we won't be here the whole time, but we probably will. I'm not used to teaching Monday, Wednesday, Fridays in the shorter class periods. So we'll probably get behind very fast. Um, so it looks like eight or nine days for Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451. Notice I have paragraph due January 31st, right? and then paper due February 10th, but I don't have anything about outline or drafts or anything like that. We'll talk about those kinds of things as we go. That is, even though I say you're going to have four papers and I've got paragraph up there, there will be other writing assignments. Okay? For example, sometime either before the paragraph or between the paragraph and paper, I'm going to have you bring in a thesis. What? Some kind of thesis related to whatever this paper is going to be, because I've not told you anything yet about what the paper topic will be or what the general area will be that you'll have to narrow down, that kind of thing. We'll, we'll get to that. And even this 
might change. This might get moved down two, possibly even three weeks. It won't get changed so far that you don't have a grade before midterms. You'll definitely have a grade before midterms. In fact, I would say you would almost definitely have a grade before February 17th, so that if you want to withdraw with a grade for W, you can. Okay? I try to do that for all my classes. Sometimes I miss. All right? And then several days for George Orwell's 1984. Why? Because it's a lot harder book. Then we have spring break. Second paper is due before spring break, which is it's sometime in here is right around when midterm grade reports, uh, grade reporting is due. Okay. Um, usually for that, I just give whatever it is you have as of that point. Sometimes I'll put comments like, you know, I've not seen you in three weeks. <laughs> you're failing the class, you might want to consider withdrawing kind of thing. Um, and I'll indicate for that to go to your advisor as well. And then notice after that, everything almost, well, at least for the next several weeks, it's to be announced. And I give you some ideas of what it, we might be discussing and or getting ready to write about. Censorship, political correctness, cancel culture, Etc. Why these topics? Well, Fahrenheit 451, the classic bestseller about censorship. Fahrenheit 451, the temperature at which books burn. Now, most people don't burn books today. It does happen some. Every now and then a novel will come out and some one group or another will go, oh, I don't like that novel. So they'll have a book burning ceremony. When J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter novels kind of made it big in the United States, we started to see various groups burning the books for one reason or another. Okay, But there's more than one way to burn a book, as Ray Bradbury will say in his afterword in Coda. You can literally burn it, or you can try to change it and burn it that way. Okay? We'll talk about that. So... Censorship, political correctness, cancel culture, as in saying so-and-so's ideas are not worthy of even being discussed, so we're not going to even listen to that person. Well, that's a form of censorship. And okay, we'll talk about, I will talk about, maybe you won't, how that's wrong and why that's wrong, etc. Okay? Um, so we're going to several weeks for that, I don't know, three total. And then we'll have, you know, some days for drafting. And even though I don't have it up here, there will be days for drafting here. Okay, there's days for drafting here. And what does that more than likely will take the form of, I will say, okay, on, what day is that? February 26th, it's going to be a drafting day. You can come to class, you cannot come to class. Come to class, bring your computer. You can work on a draft in class. I'll open up the class. I'll be here. If you have questions, I'll answer them. If nobody shows up after 10 or 15 minutes, I'll leave. Okay? That will be entirely up to you. I know some students, because I've done this in the past, I've had some students who kind of felt it helps them, it forces them to work on a draft if they have to be somewhere and in a room where there's an instructor. I know others. I am not that. By the way, I would say, and this is why I keep five hours, office hours. That's what we are required. All my other time, work, you know, I do it at home. Because I would rather be in my study where I, everything's comfortable. I can play the music I want. I don't have distractions. I don't have somebody in the office next door talking loudly on the phone or doing something, you know, whatever. Um, so if, if you work better... Wherever it is you work better, that's fine. I'm going to leave that up to you. So several of these days, um, I don't have them written down now, but I'll so tell you in class when they will be. You know, for example, some of these days. We might not meet unless you want to. And that's I'll say, I'll be here, and I'll be here for the first 10 minutes. If you want to show up and work, then I'll be here for the rest of the time also. 
But if you don't show up, that's it. Okay. Um, then we'll get into this material. Okay. Why? Because this is in preparation for this final paper. It doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about any of the ideas that are in this material before. It's just that I'm not going to assign you to read this material before. If you want to, I would say go for it. It would probably help for your first, second, and third paper. All right? But it will really be beneficial for your fourth paper. Okay? Um, and again, whenever he says a comment like, you know, the well-rounded man should know, just assume he means person. Again, the blog is directed at men, but it isn't. In terms of the material in, in these blog posts, it isn't particular. To, it applies to everybody, right? It's essentially how to think well and how to present what you think well. How to argue persuasively. That's what rhetoric is. Rhetoric is how do you convince somebody else you're right, they're wrong. That's the purpose of writing. You want to convince them in an argumentative writing course like this one is. You want to convince somebody your ideas are right. Okay. You might not want to say somebody else's ideas are wrong. You just want to convince me that your argument is right. <clears throat> you you can't have as your argument, I'm right because I said it. Because you can say two times two equals five until you're blue in the face and until you're 80 years old. And two times two still will not be five. Mere assertion of something does not make it true. You have to have proof. You have to have evidence. That's citations, quotations, that kind of stuff. You have to arrange the argument in such a way that it's you know, valid and all those kinds of things, which we'll talk about when we get to all that. Okay. And then you have the last paper, last day of class, no final. When am I going to give you a final over? You know, so last paper. Important dates, that's other stuff about, you know, withdraw, when you can withdraw and still get, I don't know, 100% of your money back in 75 and 50, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. So this, you know, you'll produce several written assignments, including four papers. Each paper will get progressively longer. Uh, each paper will be about an, should be capital E, about an issue or idea or problem raised in a, one of the assigned readings or in the classroom discussion. Okay. For example, I'm going to give you something right now, or just before we leave, that I want you to write and bring in for me on Friday. So we're going to be really short, like a paragraph or so. Okay. I'll tell you what it is in just a moment. Um, specific paper requirements, all that will be handed out with each paper. So it's not included here, okay? All right, so is there anything else there? You can go to that stuff on your own. All right, would you click on those lights, please? Everybody get ready. Okay, so what I want you to do for Friday, take a, you know, a page, like a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet, uh, lined or not, doesn't matter, and just take that page and write for me, tell me what the word censorship means to you. What is censorship? Do not look it up in a dictionary. Just tell me what you think it means, okay? And I want you to tell me this in such a way that it's like a little mini, M-I-N-I, -I, argument. So, you know, little tiny introduction might be a couple of sentences and then you kind of prove to me what you think censorship is right you don't have to look at anything else you don't have to cite anything this will just give me a little idea of what your writing level slash skills are that'll help me then figure out okay where do we need to work on some things because we're probably i I'm not meaning to belittle anybody or anything, but we're going to probably start at the basics, at the sentence level. Why? I have English majors. I had English majors last fall. Majors. Who couldn't write a paper? Everything was one long paragraph. Four page. 
literally paragraph. That's not a paper. That's a mind dump, right? No mind dumping, all right? So organize it as best you can, etc. It can be typed. It can be handwritten. If it's handwritten, it needs to be legible. You might be future doctors. I, I got to be able to read it, okay? Um, all right. That's all. Three minutes, uh, eight minutes to go. If you have any questions, I can stick around in here for eight minutes. Um, otherwise, that's all.